This engraving took my laser about 25 minutes to engrave, but this engraving only took about 7 minutes to engrave, which is a pretty crazy 73% drop. But as you can probably tell, they are not completely identical, which is why it's so important to know how the light burn settings that save you time can also affect the look of your finished engravings. And it was only after about 15 hours of research and testing that I really understood how to get the combination of speed and quality that I wanted. So in this video, I'll show you the five time-saving changes that I made to this Wolf. Plus we'll cover three extra tricks that are handy for speeding up certain types of projects to give you a total of eight changes you can try to save time on your next laser engraving. So if I were starting with a completely unoptimized design like this example Wolf you see, here, then the very first thing I would do in Lightburn is to double click on the layer that I'm working on to bring up the cut settings editor that you can see here and to check if the bi-directional fill box right here is checked. If it is off, then that means that when your laser is moving side to side, it's only actually engraving or firing the laser in one direction. But as soon as you turn that bi-directional fill on, that's telling your laser to actually engrave when it's moving in both directions. And this will instantly cut your engraving time in half, but there's a catch. This example here in the middle now has bi-directional fill turned on. And if you look really closely at the engraving, you can see that there's a bit of a ghosting effect here where it's creating curved darker lines in the engraving. And we didn't really have that problem with our original unoptimized engraving. The good news is there's a couple of ways that you can solve this problem. And with just the easiest one applied, we can get an engraving that now looks like this. And the easiest way to fix this problem is again in the cut settings editor that I have open from before and to just come in here and to turn on over scanning. In my final design, I had this set to 5% and that worked out great for me. And by the way, if you don't have this ghosting issue when you turn on bi-directional fill, then lucky you, it's probably because you have a Ruida controller that's doing the overscanning automatically. And the last thing I'll mention before we move on to the next time saver is that you can optimize your laser even further using a series of tests and manual adjustments in Lightburn. So if you're not satisfied with the easy overscanning fix, I'll leave a link in the description to some Lightburn documentation that'll take you deeper down this rabbit hole. The very next time saver I would try is to go up here to the little wrench icon, which is your device settings, and to go to this little setting right here called fast white space scan. So basically this is just going to speed up your laser when it gets to a place where an engrave or a firing of the laser is not happening. Then you're going to have to punch in a number to tell it how fast to scan during the white space. And you want this to be a number that's higher than your normal engraving speed. So my normal engraving speed that you might have seen before in the layers menu over here is 300 millimeters per second. So it needs to be faster than 300, but I also need it to be under my machine's maximum speed. And for this particular machine, my maximum is 600. And so I'm just going to punch in 500 here and leave it at that. And I should quickly mention that this setting is only really relevant to G-code lasers and not to lasers that have DSP controllers. And I know that sounds like complicated jargon and it's a whole rabbit hole that I'll probably go into at some point on my email newsletter. However, for now, most of the time, all that means is that this setting could be helpful for a lot of budget lasers, but for more expensive or premium lasers, like something you might get from Aeon or Thunder, you're usually not gonna have to worry about this. But anyway, now that I've applied these first two changes, let's compare the run times using the preview tool in Lightburn. So my original unoptimized design was showing an estimated run time of 11 minutes and 46 seconds. And my updated design is showing an estimated run time of 541. This is a 52% reduction, which is a great start, but you may have noticed that the unoptimized run time we're seeing here is way lower than the 25 minutes I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So let me briefly explain that. The 25 minutes I mentioned was the actual time that I captured with a timer, which means that this Lightburn preview estimate is wrong. This estimate can be adjusted by going into device settings and then clicking on additional settings. And depending on your laser, you can sometimes just click this little button down here at the bottom and it will automatically update your laser's settings for you to improve the preview estimate. But unfortunately that doesn't work for my specific laser and sure I could still go through one at a time and update all of these settings, but that would be really tedious and honestly I just don't want to do it. <laughs> So for the purpose of this video, just know that you can adjust your time estimates inside of the preview using the tools here that I just showed you. But even if your preview estimates aren't right on the money, it can still give you a pretty good idea of what is going to increase or decrease your total job time. The next time saver is super easy, but it can make a surprisingly big difference. And I actually picked this tip up from Brett over at Brett's Laser Garage. So hi, Brett, and the off chance you see this video. But anyway, all you're gonna do is just rotate your design. And you can do that by going up here into the menu and punching in 90 as in 90 90 degrees in the rotate box and hit enter. And then you can see that it's going to just turn my design a little bit like so. 
However, if you compare the preview estimates for our wolf design, you'll notice two things. Number one, the time is actually getting worse. And number two, it's only changed by one second. So rotating has had almost no impact in this case. But for different designs, this can actually improve your time by a decent bit. And typically where it's most useful is when engraving designs which are taller than they are wide. Like on this other wolf design where it's shaved 25 seconds off the estimate. And if you're wondering why rotating actually makes any time difference at all, well, I can think of two reasons. Number one, it can reduce the white space that the laser head has to cover simply by changing the orientation of the image. And number two, most lasers are faster when moving along the X axis compared to the Y axis. So if you rotate the image, it will sometimes put more of the engraving along the faster axis. Time saver number four is another easy one, but you have to be careful with this because if you go too far with it, then it can actually ruin your engraving pretty badly. So here's the general principle. If you increase your interval, you'll also increase your speed. The reason for this is simple. The interval is essentially the space between the lines that make up an engraving. So if there is more space between the lines, you need fewer total lines, which makes the engraving faster. But there's a point at which the interval becomes too high, and that's when you'll start to see gaps between the lines in your engraving. In other words, the engraving will begin to look blown out. However, if done carefully, this can be another good time saver and you can adjust this by finding your layer. So I have this new line interval version of my design and it's on this layer in my cuts and layers menu. And then I can find this little interval box here. Normally for my laser, this is set to 0.1, but in this case, I'm going to increase it slightly to 0.11. And even that tiny adjustment can shave a good chunk off of our time estimate. Now the next two time savers I didn't actually use on my final wolf design, but they are something that you may have seen online and they can be very useful for certain types of projects. And so I still wanted to cover them here. Let's start with offset fill. Now, if I come to my line interval layer here and I select here on the mode option, you can see that I have fill, but I also have offset fill as an option. With a normal fill layer, your laser will engrave side to side like you can see with this little illustration here on the left. But if I change to offset fill, then you can see that it now engraves following the shape of the design. It's not just going side to side like before. And because the path of the laser is fundamentally different when using offset fill, it can be a big help, especially for designs with a lot of white space in the middle, like this happy birthday design where it's nearly cutting the engrave time in half. However, for other designs, it can actually make the engraving take longer, which actually would have been the case with our original wolf design. If we go back to the preview of the line interval version of the wolf design, we get a time estimate of five minutes and 17 seconds. Now, when I change that design to use offset fill, the estimated engraving time gets worse by about 48%. Time saver number six is gonna be flood fill, which is similar to offset fill in a few ways. For example, it doesn't do your standard side to side engraving. And also it can be useful for designs where there are large amounts of white space in the middle. However, it operates a bit differently. As you can see in this preview, it doesn't go round and round the shape like offset fill does. It goes side to side more like a normal engraving, but it kind of goes in sections. To enable flood fill, you go to the layer you're working with, double click on it, and then get your cut settings editor. Then you go to advanced and there's a little toggle box here that says flood fill. So if you wanted to use that, you would just make sure it's toggled on. And if you happen to be a big nerd like me, then you might've checked the Lightburn documentation and found this big warning about flood fill that basically says you need to be careful with it because it's useful, but it can leave gaps in your engraving if your machine isn't super well tuned. And I can confirm that this is a real concern. If you just look at this example I made with flood fill on, you'll see that there's these really prominent light colored ridges that go straight through the engraving. So flood fill and offset fill can both be useful. Just make sure you check the preview and do some test engravings before you count on these two settings. Now we're back to our main project here for time saver number seven, and that is to optimize your power and speed settings. It won't surprise you to hear that if you increase the speed, your engraving will go faster. But because the extra speed can make it take longer for your laser to slow down and change directions, at some point you reach a threshold where more speed actually slows down your total runtime. And you could run a bunch of tests for this using the same design, but different speed points until you reach that threshold where you have the maximum speed without slowing down your overall runtime. But practically speaking, it's probably only worth doing that much testing if you're working on a project that you're going to do dozens or hundreds of times for some sort of production run. So for a one-off project like this Wolf, I'll sometimes make small adjustments using some good old fashioned educated guessing. And that's what I did in this case. I just increased my speed from what it was, which was 300 millimeters per second, up a bit to 300 150 millimeters per second and to compensate for that increased speed and to keep a similar level of darkness in the engraving i also increased my power by 10 percent from 65 to 75 percent but there's one other bonus time saver i'd like to show you that'll save you a lot of time if you were doing a batch of several items like this 
So what you're gonna do is double click on your layer and you're gonna get your cut settings editor. And then you're going to see these three little circles down here at the bottom. The top option is the default and it's pretty good most of the time. But if you have a situation where you're doing multiple shapes that are spread out pretty far apart, then one of the two other options here might actually save you a lot of time. For example, let's say we had a bunch of these different wolf designs to do, and maybe we were trying to spread them out to put them at different places on some scrap wood, then we might actually really benefit from that setting I just showed you. So as you can see in the left preview, I haven't changed anything, and it's estimating a runtime of 24 minutes and 32 seconds, but now on the right, I've just changed that setting to fill groups together, and you can see that it is substantially reducing the runtime. And that's why I personally use this fill groups together option all of the time for this sort of thing. And as you've been watching this video, if you've ever had a moment where you felt like you're missing some key piece of information, like how layers work or how to set up good tests, then you might want to check out my new and improved Lightburn 101 video that you can find up here on screen. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and click or tap on that, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye now.